Donald Trump's presidency presents the likelihood of drastic shifts and changes in U.S. foreign policy. Within the first week, we've seen a string of executive orders that have already had an immediate impact on America's foreign relations. I'm here with Afghanistan's ambassador to the United States, Hamdullah Mohib, to discuss some of the implications for the U.S.-Afghanistan relationship. As this new administration settles in, uh, what do you hope to see uh, from the new president? Well, Afghanistan and the United States have been uh, working on fighting terrorism for the past 15 years. I think it's time to, um, to, um, uh, to, to make sure that we win that war against um, uh, global terrorism. There are 20 terrorist groups that operate in the FPAC region, and the U.S. designated terrorist groups. On top of that, the Taliban and, uh, and some of the other state and stateless um, actors that operate. And it's important that they get a clear message from us, from the world, that they cannot win. And it's, uh, I think we, we are close to getting there. Interesting. So uh, we've seen some mixed messages from President Trump so far. Uh, in early December, there was a phone call uh, between then-President-elect Trump and President Ghani where uh, President Trump reassured that there would be U.S. Uh, commitment to Afghanistan. Does that uh, agreement, from your knowledge, still hold? Um, and, and, and if it doesn't, what would be the impact of U.S. disengagement? From our discussions with the new administration, we have the indications that they have strong interest uh, in supporting the, the fight against terrorism. And they also have a strong interest in promoting economic stability in the region. Um, so we look forward to working in, uh, on, on those, both those areas. Um, I think um, the counterterrorism agenda is going to be one of the priorities for this new administration. And, and Afghanistan is one of those places where, like I said before, we must show that we win and we can win. Um, and we are, we, we, we have, the American government has a, as a, as a good partner um, in Afghanistan where that can be uh, turned around. And, and, and this will have a huge implication on what happens in the rest of the region and what kind of messages are sent to other groups, whether they're Al-Shabaab, um, uh, Al-Qaeda, perhaps Baku Haram, and uh, Daesh, to, to all of those groups that are fighting uh, and causing instability across the world. It will also send a very strong message to all the states that sponsor terrorism to, to, be, uh, to, to be aware that this will not be tolerated. I think at a time where uh, the, the world is focused on, uh, on economic development, Afghanistan is at the heart of Central and South Asia. We sit on top of huge uh, potential, uh, mining potential, uh, the, the natural resources that exist, and some of them can already be, uh, we can already begin exploiting. This will also bring stability. It also ensure that Afghanistan can pay uh, for its own security forces. Uh, top of the agenda, top of the list would be lithium. Uh, Afghanistan is endowed with a huge amount of lithium, and that is um, um, is what the new industry um, in in terms of um, this global focus on uh, battery powered vehicles, laptops, and in, in electronics. Uh, lithium is the new um, oil, um, and Afghanistan has it in abundance. Um, it's easy to exploit as well. Um, so we look forward to working with the U.S. companies uh, and the new administration to, to, uh, to, uh, to benefit and mine um, some of those resources. So you yeah. talked a little bit about the dynamic between a security relationship yeah. and an economic partnership. Mm -hmm. What are the dynamics there um, and how should the U.S. engage uh, to flesh out that dynamic? On the, in the war on terrorism, a, a big number of people who join uh, the, these terrorist organizations or groups um, do it out of, some of them do it out of poverty and they, they, they need to feed their, um, you know, their families. What, if we can provide alternative livelihood, right? if we can provide jobs and opportunities, we can even st eradicate opium uh, because the people who grow opium are not the ones that really benefit from it. What they're looking for is guaranteed income. If, and they don't earn a lot. They just earn more than, there is more stability and more guarantee in their income than they would have been, cons cons say, vegetables or fruit. Uh, if we can provide another alternative to it, it could be anything. 
we can eradicate that that source and we know that m a, a big uh, a big source of income for for the terrorist is uh, the opium trade so the the there is a huge linkage and a very important linkage between economy and um, and, and insecurity uh, it's it's it solves each other if we if we bring stability we all uh, we also improve the lively and uh, the, the, the opportunities for doing business in afghanistan but we, and vice versa yeah. So uh, recently I've heard you describe the sort of uh, economic shock mm -hmm. uh, that's hit Afghanistan uh, after the U.S. has started to mm -hmm. move away a little bit. Uh, can, you just, can you describe how Afghanistan is dealing with that shock um, and what are some success stories so far? Well, the biggest um, shock was in 2014, just after the withdrawal uh, of foreign troops. Um, not just foreign troops, also the contractors and the companies, their, their development projects that went. There were uh, provincial reconstruction teams in every, almost every province of the country. And when they withdrew, not only did they and did the people that worked directly with them lose jobs, all of the businesses that depended on that economy also uh, were also affected. But if there is one thing Afghanistan is... Um, um, is expert in dealing with is uncertainty. Yeah. We came out of that, we started working on our economy and not only did our revenues go up, uh, our custom revenues uh, go up uh, despite this uh, downturn in, the, um, the, in imports, we also brought in investments and the first investments are always going to be from the diaspora. Last year um, the Afghans that lived outside invested close to one billion dollars in Afghanistan. And that gave the confidence in, to other investors. So we had foreign co companies that also started investing in the country. So we are recovering from that, um, from, from, from that shock and we're doing it in a fashion and in a way that, uh, that will be sustainable uh, in Afghanistan, yeah, to our country. Too. Mm. So in the past, I've heard you talk about the biggest challenge has been uh, changing the narrative about Afghanistan. Uh, what progress has been made on that goal so far? Um, and, and how do you hope to make more progress in the future? Well, at least in Washington, I hope that we have been able to make a dent in looking at Afghanistan just from a security prism. Afghanistan is the land of opportunities. It's unfortunate that in the past 40 years or close to 40 years, we have been uh, the victim of, a, of, of an imported war, but the Afghan people are determined to get out of that. Um, there is n n nothing more important to us than bringing stability to our country, and we will, and we are working on, on that. Despite very difficult odds, we have been able to um, protect the Afghan people, the Afghan um, territory, and our sovereignty over the past two years with very little support. I mean, considering the amount of attacks we are under and the amount of terrorist groups that operate in our region and the, the support to them from outside, our security forces performed tremendously over the past two years, very bravely. We had a very high casualty rate, but, uh, but it should not be taken as a weakness. What we did um, was show that we will defend our land and our, our country to, to the last man standing. Our military is all voluntary, just like the American military. So these people are not forced to go to the front line, they choose to. They choose to fight for their country. We have also seen that over the past two years, sympathies for, for the Taliban, if there were any existed, they've also gone down. In Kandahar alone, where which, which is usually the, 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 the stronghold for the Taliban, sympathies went down from 60% down to 22 percent and this is the Asia Foundation survey that they do every year of the Afghan people saying that corruption has also been fought against what people are not seeing and what we are trying to to show is there is a different Afghanistan in the making that has already begun um, working and and I am an example of it my colleagues around as an example 75 percent of the country was born in a war we're educated um, we're, we're worldly, um, technologically savvy, culturally sophisticated. This is the Afghanistan that's going marching forward. And I think people don't see that Afghanistan. They don't see the Afghanistan and the Afghan people who have fought terrorism or and lived under terrorism for, for a very long time and are frustrated by it and are determined to get rid of it. 
and we're doing everything we can. You see that the drive in sense of um, the, uh, the sympathy that has lowered ha has a lot to do with, with what this new Afghanistan offers. People are not willing to support groups that, are, that bring havoc, that bring um, backwardness onto the country. This is, a different, this is a different country, a country that will become, as we want it to be, a, a place where people, goods, and ideas flow freely. Mm -hmm. So you've talked a little bit about the region at the end there, and I want to return back to that mm -hmm. point and, and discuss a particularly interesting bilateral relationship mm -hmm. between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Um, where does that relationship stand, um, and, and, and what's the path forward to possibly improving that relationship? Well, from the Afghan side, we have made every uh, possible attempt to mend that relationship, and we will continue to do so. Because, like I said, our ultimate desire is peace and stability, not just for us, for the region. It's in their interest, as well as in our interest, that we have stability. I think Pakistan, as well as the region, and I think even in the world, needs to see their future in our present. Don't be mistaken that today we are facing with terrorism and that this will not come around and hit them. It has already started and the, the countries around have started to notice, including Pakistan. We're working on creating a regional consensus to bring stability to our, to, to our entire region. Uh, and as, as a country that has suffered from terrorism entirely, we wish it on no one else. Uh, and I'd just like to end with uh, the ambassador's thoughts, advice to the new administration, and any uh, final thoughts that you may have. Well, we're a partner. Uh, we're not just a partner, we're a platform for the United States, not, on, not only on fighting the, uh, the, the terrorism front, but also in terms of key opportunities in that region, in business development uh, and economic prosperity. Afghanistan is... Uh, prime property in Asia. We are the heart of Asia and, uh, and that potential is something that we wish to look um, to, to explore with you further. Thank you. Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely.